All right, this week um, I'm going to uh, change the springs out on this car, get this to sit a little bit um, with a better rake to it. Right now, although it is actually uh, raked forward a little bit, as you can see by the um, by the bottom of the rocker there that it's a little closer in the front to the ground by about you know three quarters of an inch or so. Um, when you stand here visually right now and look at the uh, the car, it'll definitely have a look of being pitched up forward, up uh, in the front, I should say, um, because the way the Daytona nose and everything fits, uh, it's about almost two inches higher than what I've got on my car. And um, so uh, I wanted to get mine a lot lower, and I ended up changing just the front springs on that car. But this is a different suspension, so we're going to go all the way around and, and um, lower it about 1.4 in the rear and 1.7 in the front. <clears throat> and hopefully um, we'll get the attitude of the car to look like we want it to and not cause any issues. I'm going to have to start off with uh, uh, checking the cambers uh, on the front tires and see... Uh, see what that angle is because I have adjustable A-arms to go in here on the top because once you drop the car, uh, especially in the front, uh, it starts to get a lot of camber in it and we don't want to wear the inside of the tire so we got to pull the top of the tire back out uh, as much as we can with an adjustable upper A-arm. A um, the rear, uh, the rear um, like I said, it's. Uh, I don't really want to drop the rear any more than this but um, uh, I don't feel comfortable just uh, uh, swapping front uh, springs. It's a lot of distance on the front without doing anything to the rear. So we'll see what happens. We can always change them back out if it looks uh, ridiculous, but I don't think it will. I think it's going to look pretty nice. Um, I don't know how much of this I'm going to film because there's plenty of uh, videos that show you how to do this, and I've got my own way of going about it, uh, which involves just dropping the entire cradle on this side instead of trying to take all the suspension apart <clears throat> and um, to release the spring which requires there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of bolt ups behind the uh, the brake uh, uh, rotor and um, in order to let the lower arms drop down to get the spring out so what I've done in the past it's worked for me is, is there are two bolts that go up into the uh, frame that hold the cradle the whole cradle for the rear end and they're about they're real long bolts and uh, just taking those out and just letting the whole cradle drop down on this side now thing of it is, is you got to be careful when you do that because when you put it back up even though the other side is still bolted up it'll have a tendency to shift a little bit so I have to come up with a little bit of a jig that will help me relocate it exactly where it is so I don't have to worry about wheel alignment in the rear, you know, shift in the rear end so we've got a dog walk or anything like that because uh, you can shift that cradle quite a bit once you loosen those bolts. But the way I do it, like I said, is just go ahead and loosen these or take these bolts out and drop this whole cradle down and then uh, put it back up, tighten it up before I go to the other side and, and do, the, do the same thing over there. That's what we're about doing. Okay, thanks to the interwebs and YouTubes, uh, there's an easier way to do all this than uh, loosening these uh, cradle bolts and then having to make sure you get them aligned back. It's simply, uh, if you support the spring bucket from underneath with a jack, and this jack happens to fit up in there nicely so it doesn't slide on this arm, fits up in this pocket here. It's a pretty deep pocket up here below this, the, uh, the rear spring. And just dis disconnecting the um, the shock absorber bolt right here, and then slowly disconnecting this point of this lower uh, suspension arm here. In addition to that, you have to unplug the the uh, way, these gates that are on the exhaust. There's a wire run into them so that you could unhook the uh, exhaust straps and hangers, and then just slowly let this thing down so you can get to this this bolt and pull this bolt out once you can do that this whole thing drops and you can slowly let it down let the tension out of the spring and finally you can get it to where it's loose and you can you can pull it out so uh, journey of discovery learn something new every day but I also forget about two or three things so somehow it evens out 
Okay, um, it's in, uh, but I can see why that wouldn't be a preferred method to some degree. While you don't have to take all this apart, which is what I had to do when I did the ones on the uh, GTX, because I was changing, of course, I was changing these back hub also, hubs also. Um, this is, when you take this bolt out and that pivot bolt out there, um, it's kind of easier to get this uh, shock absorber back into place first. But then this thing here wants to rotate. It's like it's like on a ball joint here, so it wants to rotate. So when you go to jack it up, what happens is, is it, the the spring when it starts to get under a little bit of a load, it wants to rotate the entire arm. So it doesn't want to go cleanly up. You know, it's like a fork going up into this spot here. So it wants to go in in a in a twisted position. So and then I'm having to use two jacks, one to support the pocket over here, and the other one to just basically pick just the corner of this up to try and rotate it back so a little tricky and um, you know you got to keep an eye on what you're doing and what you're releasing and when you're releasing it so uh, it's not easy but um, it's in there and uh, that's why I'm going to do the other one because otherwise you know when you loosen these bolts which is for the entire cradle uh, this whole cradle can shift uh, left to right front to back so you can get the wheel alignment all twisted so there's less of a risk of doing anything by just letting this arm down from this pivot point. There's plenty of room to get the spring in and out. And um, it stays located here. You don't take this bolt out, obviously. Just the uh, shock absorber and uh, this pivot point here. Like I said, this is, the, this is the worst part of it, trying to get this to fork back up because once this thing starts to jack up and this spring starts to engage, it wants to roll away like this. So, like I said, a little tricky. Just got to be patient. Okay, so you can see about how much it dropped on the back here. Um, the uh, you can see the the full tire, almost the full tire uh, wall uh, before I put those springs in. So sitting back on its haunches right now, uh, kick back. Obviously, because I haven't done anything to the front end yet, you can see how pitched up that looks. Um, most of it's optical illusion, but we got to reconcile it anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, I've got it on these. Uh, these stands and these dollies so that I could uh, rotate the tire if I need to check anything as far as the alignment is concerned um, and they also create an artificial plane up in the air so it's easier to work on the suspension so um, what I have to do here now is while I've got it in this setup here is to check my camber um, and uh, see where it is right now and uh, the, the goal is to try and get as close to this camber as possible with the up, upper A-frames replaced, uh, you know, tilting it back out as much as possible. Might not be able to get as, uh, all of it out, but if I leave the stock ones in, it's going to pull the tire in pretty dramatically once the springs go in. So that's what I'll be up to next. All right, so uh, when I say I'm checking my camber, I'm just checking it as it relates to the car as it sits right now. This is not, uh, you know, what you do if you're really going to do a, a, you know, spec uh, alignment. That you need to have the car completely level on a rack and everything else. Right now, it's just I want to see what the relationship is to, the, to this uh, car right now. And so I've got a simple arrangement here. This is just a square setup I made up out of uh, some angle aluminum and gives me a platform to just put a smart level on and that gives me an idea uh, if I touch the, uh, the rim from the bottom to the top you know what this uh, what this camber angle should be when I'm done messing around here so if I zero it out basically it's roughly about a quarter of an inch off the top of the rim there uh, which is a lot of camber compared to the last few cars I did, which were about an eighth of an inch. So it's about showing one degree right there right now. So that'll be my target. I'll put this wheel and tire. Now the other side might be completely different based on the fact that the car is not leveled out, but, um, you know, it's close enough. All of these stands were built at the same time and, uh, you know, the pretty same height, they're pretty much the same height off the floor. Like I said, it's not precise, but I'll go around to the other side and check that and, uh, try to use that as the same target okay I just wanted to illustrate something for anybody who's trying to 
do this kind of a swap with the charger. Um, because this is independent rear suspension, I talked about in the beginning when I set these quarters, that with the suspension completely dangled, uh, the quarter panel was almost touching uh, this tire at about less than a quarter of an inch space here. Now that I've got these lowering springs on here, you can see that this is opened up to, uh, that's, all, that's about a half of an inch there. And you can see now this is the major issue that, uh, you know, happens with these cars because the new cars, all the bodies come down, they're flush with the tires all the way to the bottom here. And these older cars, this particular model, the body crosses over the tire's path right here. So this is going to be your major uh, point of interference um, if you have a stock quarter on here. And this is what has to be gapped pretty large here, almost uh, three quarters of an inch at least, and in addition to cutting down this uh, inner rim to its minimum, which I cut it down to a half an inch. Now that's not going to be an issue as far as this car because it's going to be wide bodied and these are going to be um, enlarged. But you can see as the suspension travels, travels as the car rebounds down and the suspension travels up, it moves backwards so that it gets closer to the back here. That's just the way the geometry is set up on this. It's not like a regular straight axle car where the, the rear end basically pivots from wherever um, you, you have um, some uh, arms coming off here, like truck arms would be really long to the center of the car. Uh, some have four links and they're back here, but basically it rotates pretty equally and it, if anything it rotates up towards the front of the car. These cars, everything squeezes up and squeezes to the back. Just wanted to show you that. All right, in order to get to the uh, necessary bolts to loosen this, uh, take this strut out of here on the top side, there's three nuts over here that have to be accessed. Here's something that I never had to deal with. This is a mount for whatever this is. I have no idea what that is. At, at any rate, uh, it'll be a good opportunity once I take this mount off uh, to cut it down about a half of an inch because this is a bit of a clearance issue with the hood So if I could just get another half of an inch drop here, which is what I've got as far as I got about five-eighths of an inch before it Contacts the top of the shock tower there. Uh, I'll be good to go. I also had to Pull loose the air cleaner and get that out of this hole so that I could take this uh, antifreeze a Reservoir swing it out of the way so that I could get to these this nut here and then that nut down there, which is the upper A-frame um, nut. Anyway, just thought I'd show you all the conglomeration that has to be dealt with. But this is uh, just a mount for that thing there. Normally, on some regular challengers, all you see here is just these three, um, these three nuts on top. They used to have a plastic cover for that back in the day. Um, I guess they're cutting costs. They don't put those on there anymore. Anyway... Okay, so I've got the suspension supported by a bottle jack right up underneath of the um, where the shock mounts to the bottom. I've pulled the shock bolt out uh, right here, uh, through bolts through there, and just keeping that supported so everything doesn't flop over on me. Right now, I'm getting ready to uh, separate the ball joint. Uh, this is one of those Chrysler specific tools to help uh, protect the boot here. Um, anyway. That's what I'm getting ready to do, uh, and then get this whole thing to tilt out so that I can then loosen the top of the strut and take it out. I've already unplugged. This is the active suspension connection that normally uh, hooks up up here and then clamps the various things to get out of the way of the suspension travel. Anyway, that's where I'm at. All right, so I got the spindle uh, basically uh, freed up from the upper ball joint before I did that, <clears throat> I made sure I went ahead and I drilled a hole in this little bit of webbing here. Uh, so I had a, definitely had a point to where I could take a bungee cord, a short bungee cord, and hold the weight of this so that it didn't put any stress on this brake line. So, you know, I just want to make sure that I, all the weight is supported. And now with the bottle jack, I can, I can drop this at a controlled rate to make sure I don't put any tension on that. Also, there's a nut on the back side here that um, connects this shock absorber uh, to the uh, sway bar. 
There's a sway bar link right here, so that has to be taken free also. Okay, if you watched my build on Don's car, you know we tried to maintain uh, the shape of the front uh, fender openings with stock fenders, and uh, we were having issues um, with it rubbing, so I had to widen the fenders a bit and um, cut the opening uh, a lot larger than I'd like to have just to try and clear those issues, but uh, uh, in the end, he, he still was having a little bit of issues on the driver's side, and... Um, the solution we came up with was um, there's a puck kit that you can buy and it raises it's either three quarters or an inch and a quarter uh, that you can fit on here uh, you basically get a set of uh, bolts that are longer and then you put the puck on and that raises the whole strut tower or raises the whole strut I should say it pushes it down towards the bottom of the car and raises the whole uh, front end of the car up that helps because it raises the car. If you get the big one, uh, it raises the car about an inch and uh, helps that turn out a bit, even with the trim. So um, anyway, that's one solution. If you like your car uh, the high in the air with some of these old chargers, that's the way uh, they used to look. And if you like that look where the car is sitting way up high, then that's a solution to get, uh, get some tire clearance in the front. The other, of course, is to change to a set of 18-inch. Uh, I think Torque Thrust makes an 18-inch wheel and you got to get a custom spacer to get it off of the Brembo brakes. But uh, if you get the offset correct and you get the uh, offset it to the inside as much as you can and narrow it up to a nine inch wheel, um, you know, then you get a little bit more clearance there also. But uh, we stuck with the SRT8 wheels, which uh, I believe are tens, nine and a half, something like that. But uh, <clears throat> the profile, the side profile of the tire being so short on those tires, uh, they don't roll off as much at the top so that causes issues also so there's lots of lots of little stuff that you can do to try and sneak sneak a little more clearance here and there but it's it's super tight especially with these srt models <clears throat> there's the tricky part i'm gonna take these spring compressors here make sure they're on the opposite sides of the spring and uh pull it down just enough to take the tension off the spring don't need to go crazy just enough to release it the other thing is, is that the stud in the middle here has to be held, held uh, with a number eight uh, socket, and then a number 19 socket. I sacrificed and welded it up onto this wrench here, and uh, in order to take this nut loose, it's a bit tedious, time-consuming, but uh, just got to be careful. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the um, <clears throat> adjustable a fr upper a frames in. So. What I like to do, just a matter of course, the, the uh, upper A frames that I'm getting ready to put in have an adjustable ball joint over here, is just make up a quick jig uh, to hold the stock one in, just to check and make sure that the the, um, the caster angle's right. In other words, it should go in this. I made this little slot in the wood there for the ball joint to go in, and then I'll mark the center also and get uh, get it in the neighborhood of what uh, the stock upper A frame looks like, and then. I'll, I'll move it out maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe even a half an inch uh, to start with uh, to, because I know that it's going to need more caster, or excuse me, more camber angle uh, in order to straighten up the tires once, once I put these uh, back into the car with the new springs. All right, this is what the adjustable um, A-frame looks like. So basically there's uh, six allen head screws that go through here machine screws into this plate which is much better than the one I have on my car the one on my car I just had one single large slot and it had a nut on the top of course that was a universal one where you could take and move the ball joint in all different directions in order to accommodate any car you were putting it on this one here is specific for this uh, Challenger um, so it's already set as far as your caster angle is concerned that's front to rear here um, the camber angle of course then you have to set by sliding this in or out and I'll start about maybe a half inch out from my stock mark over here to the center line here, tighten that down. Like I said, I like this a whole lot more. Just snugging this up, it's almost impossible to slide. Mine, I had to put a block in there, a piece of steel that, you know, it wasn't called for, but I had it slide back one time and this looked, got out of my car. Saw so the camera was quite a bit out of adjustment. I had to redo it. So this is a lot better, a lot better system. Anyway, that's that. 
A couple of things that you got to take care to do um, is when you put this back in, is to make sure that the rubbers are already seated to where you can see the end of the spring and there's a little step here in the rubber, make sure it's rotated before it gets any tension on it. The same with the upper one. And at the same time, there's usually a, a factory mark right here because the two small, there's these two are closer than this one. And this one has to align with this flange so that this goes in square uh, and catches the uh, suspension at the right point. So anyway, this has got to line up with that. So everything's got to be rotated, you know, because this will this can go anywhere. Um, but once you tighten it down, you can't rotate it because of the rubber and the friction and the tension of the spring. All right, so that's the easy side done. Well, on to the next side. We still might have to adjust the camber. Brought it out a half inch. I'm going to bring the other one out a half an inch, the same. And uh, we'll see how that all goes when we get the tires and everything. When we get the car sitting on the tires and the weight of the car, and see how that all looks. Went ahead and uh, used the opportunity to cut this bracket down about a half an inch. Hopefully that gets this out of the way as far as interfering with the, uh, the underside of the hood. Um, this side here is going to be a little bit more of a puzzle because we hardly have any room under this canister as it is. Also, this can't go in any further in this direction, which normally what I would do is try to slide it down the hill to get me a little bit of uh, clearance, but this neck is right up against the frame that I have to uh, 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 frame out the uh, power bulge. I mean, I could always cut out the frame, but and that's what I might end up having to do. But uh, we'll see what the bracket looks like and see what can be done. But for this side, I'm going to have to take this crossbar off and get the, this um, ECM out of here and this plug out of the way because i got to get down to you know the other side. The A-frame bolt is here, and you can't, can't even see it on this side. There's so much in the way. But uh, So... That's what I'll be up to next. All right, on this side of the car, um, I want to drop this coolant container as much as possible. It looks like it may be only three-eighths of an inch I'm going to be able to do that, but every little bit will help with that uh, cap interfering with the hood. So um, I went ahead and I just flattened out the tops of these uh, bolts. I still have plenty of length on the bolts. Um, I also I didn't eliminate this uh, entirely because in, in case... The spring needs to be changed for any reason. Still have the ability to hold that still, but took about a quarter of an inch off of this length here because this is right. There's a cavity at the bottom of the tank that this is not hitting yet, but if I lower it, I don't want to have any interference on this top piece right here. All right, in order to get this, um, get this uh, coolant container dropped down a little lower here, let's try and clear this cap on the hood. Um, I've got about three-eighths of an inch that I was able to drop it. Basically I, I cut three-eighths of an inch out of all of these legs and then dropped the legs down on this bracket. It goes on top of this strut uh, tower here. I also went ahead and notched out this little bit of webbing right over here so that these tabs that mount to the sides of this uh, container over here will drop down as low as they can go. And so far, nothing's rubbing here. I already went ahead, as I told you, took a little, about a quarter of an inch off the tips here and just ground them down, um, and a little bit off of here also. Uh, but uh, so we'll see if that all works out once I get everything tightened down, because that'll draw these these bolts are not 100% drawn up in here. So may still have a little bit of interference issues, but uh, uh, we can always just space it up on the bracket itself. But uh, or slide some uh, so shims around the base of the this bracket over here once it's in place. Anyway, that's what I'm up to. Well, that's what it looks like setting on the ground and the fender's just thrown up there and the mock-up wing just propped up there. So, give you an idea how it's going to sit. So it's a whole lot lower in the rear than my car because my car I didn't uh, do any lowering in the back because I had the Nivo mats, which are the low leveling uh, shocks in the rear, which and no matter what you did, the shocks hold the back of the car up. At, at any rate, um, the cross member over here is about 
uh, four and a half inches off the ground. Mine is four inches off the ground. Once in a while I get into a little trouble with that, but uh, you know, high curb transitions and stuff, but if I'm careful and go slow, not a problem. So there's no weight on the front end as far as the sheet metal, but I don't see that it's gonna be that much more weight relative to the motor that's already in the car, so shouldn't drop too much more. I wish I could keep those fenders looking exactly like that because I like the way that looks, but um, once these tires start steering out, um, we'll have to see what, what kind of clearance we need and how we have to reshape that fender. But right now the front end of the fender is about three quarters of an inch higher than my car, which is pretty darn close based on the fact that it's sit, this is sitting a lot lower in the rear, so the nose is naturally pitched up just a, just a tick. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's too bad. Um, it looks pretty good to me. So anyway, that's all the time I have uh, for this uh, week. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing. Those uh, couple little things that I, I clearanced over here. Um, yeah, this is the uh, this is now the uh, clearance I have for this container. Just enough. Um, also, there'll be a support here, a stob keep this arced up so it doesn't want to flatten out. That's an awfully long hood. I have a mid-stop on my car too and over here we have this other item over here that uh, you can see we've got plenty of clearance on this item now. Uh, so those are the two main obstacles uh, as far as clearing that hood. Um, anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for this week and um, I will see you on the next one.